He is a tough talking CEO on a mission to shake up the mining industry. Since my next guest took control of the world's second biggest miner, he launched a hostile bid for its arch rival, now a partner in a joint venture, a buyout of a struggling subsidiary, and has sold more than one billion of assets. Mark Bristow, head of Barrick, joins me today in studio. Mark, it's been too long. Congratulations. Thank you, Daniel. It's been so long. The last time I spoke to you, you were still at Wrangled. That's correct. And you've had, had tremendous success at Barrick. You are one of the greatest uh, CEOs in, in, in mining history. Um, but my question is, you've accomplished so much this year. You've said in past interviews, your vision now is where does where is my company in the next 10 years? Exactly. What's the strategy for Barrick? So, you know, this last year has been fun um, as we've delivered on everything that we said we would. And, and now this year is about consolidation. We've got a lot to do on costs and efficiencies. We've got to roll out our sort of real time data. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know automation and uh, sort of digital and that we're building that platform, so that we really do s set the foundation for the future. And then it's about the industry itself because, as you point out, you know if you look ten years down, we can't be who we are today. But mining is definitely yeah. a very important component of the globe's future. Mark, you've also said that copper will be a vital part of gold mining down the road. Are you only eyeing top tier copper deposits like Grasberg or, or would you even consider a mid tier? So Grasberg, just to correct you, is, is a top tier copper asset, but it's also the world's number one tier one gold asset. And what I've really said is right. that if you want to build a global gold business capable of being relevant in 10, two decades time, you're going to have to accept that you're going to mine copper because the big mm -hmm. gold deposits today come with copper. So, so Barrick today has copper producers, but they are pure copper. But you know, to be able to continue to replace the mine, the gold we mine—that's five million ounces a year. We're going to have to look at, uh, particularly working in the Western Americas, that geology are, is primarily porphyry style uh, deposits and they come with you know you know when the gold price is up like today they got gold mm -hmm. mines when the copper price is up maybe they gold copper mines but they come collectively and and just for some reference if you look at the undeveloped top tier copper deposits uh, more than two-thirds of them are come with gold and so it's it's a vice right. versa and so and, and yes to answer your question if we get involved in copper, they need to be tier one assets. Would you have in any interest in entering the platinum group space as a fellow uh, South African? I come from uh, there. Right. And my speciality is platinum. That's where I cut my teeth. Right. And, um, but gold is precious and it's not platinum. <laughs> it's not platinum, but now with the run up in, in palladium and look yeah. at rhodium, it's incredible. Yeah, it's no it's longer the most precious uh, in the space. Well, gold is still the most precious. <laughs> Um, but gold is, you know, the difference is if you look at copper and, 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 and gold, they come together geologically and also metallurgically, the process that you use to extract and mm -hmm. refine right. them, it's easy right. and it's very similar, whereas platinum is a completely different game found in different rock types, mm -hmm. it's a different geology. Let's get your sentiment on the mining market now. Spot gold, uh, you know, up 8% year to date. But gold miners are underperforming. I'm not putting Barrick in that category since you're actually outpacing uh, a physical gold. Um, but why the disconnect, do you think? So we haven't invested in our future, as you and I have discussed yeah. in the past. And, you know, what, what the combination of Barrick and, and Rand Gold brings is, a, is that memory and experience of investing in exploration, which is really the right. engine that drives the value creating train. Um, and, and we haven't done that. The, you know, the, we're forecasting drop in production. The grades have dropped substantially in the, in the global reserve of the industry. And so it's, a, it's in a difficult position. Whereas if you look at Barrick, it's one of the few mining companies when we declared our reserves this year for on the basis of last year's uh, depletion 
we replaced the answers we depleted through mining at a better grade. And so our quality is a standout uh, in the industry. And, and how far are we from finding that next big gold deposit, Mark? So, um, is it out there? It's yes, and uh, absolutely. And so that's a, uh, a very a good question because Barrick has a gold rush and four mile, which are the latest mega discoveries in the gold industry, you know, post uh, our discoveries in Rand Gold. And we've spent the last 12 months really pushing that ownership of the geology, the planning back to the mines and empowering geologists. As you know, Rand Gold is always a geocentric company and we want Barrick to be the same. And we are now in a position where we've staffed up, staffed up on our exploration teams. We have fully uh, staffed and capable exploration teams in West Africa, East Africa, the Andean trend down in South America, of course, Nevada, and, uh, and recently uh, Central Asia. We've just done a deal with uh, Japan Gold. Right. And, and so our budget next year is about $170 million for exploration and a l most of that will be on green fields looking forward to the future. And so we've caught up an hour and we're ready to go back to that Rand Gold resource triangle, real focus on, um, on uh, hunting that big elephant. You've also upped dividends. Uh, Barrick is one of, you know, the mining industry is not known as an industry to pay out dividends. Barrick is one of the few. But is this an inevitable path that you feel the mining sector has to take to attract more generalist investors? So your comment is, I can deal with that because that's not why we're doing it, you know. The mining industry is full of vogues, you know, we follow things, but and they're all short term. I've always said dividends are supported by your P&L. If you look at our business plan, that's why we're rolling out a 10-year mm -hmm. plan mm -hmm. for to share with the market. Mm -hmm. w the dividends that we've announced, we can support uh, going forward at $1,200 gold for 10 years. So this is a product of our success. I've always said to people, you know, my, my people, if you plan to, uh, if you plan a certain plan, a business plan, mm -hmm. and you beat it. Mm -hmm. And then the gold price is higher than <laughs> what you expect. Yeah. You should give something back to your owners, you know, and that's what we're doing. But it needs to be sustainable. Well, I, I asked that question because, you know, when I ask people, why aren't you in the mining stocks? And the answer I usually get is, well, there's no dividend. I want a dividend. And, you know, when we, when we talk about, well, how can you get people interested and educated in the mining sector? That's where my question was headed is, do you, you know, do you exactly. need that dividend? So, so if you go back to Rand Gold Resources, our P&L looked like any other business uh, anywhere in the world. Um, and the mining industry has always got a little uh, strange, uh, it's, it's, it's P&L, it's income yeah. statement has always been a bit challenging to understand. We've brought Barrick to that point. You know, if you look back 12 right. months, we have, uh, we have halved the debt. We've got six and a half billion dollars of liquidity. We really have a business that's capable of delivering over 10 mm -hmm. years. We are able to invest in our future and we are independent of the capital markets. Walk us through your production guidelines of, of achieving this goal. So our production guidelines are very simple, five million ounces a year. Uh, for 10 years and then and that's on the on what we've got because we've got tier one assets the definition of a tier one asset is it's got to produce at 500,000 ounces mm -hmm. for more than 10 years in the bottom half of the cost curve so if you look at Nevada and you look at North America it's a two and a half and growing production tributable to Barrick LATAM we call it uh, Central South America and the Pacific Rim we've about 1.1 million ounces, also for 10 years, because it's based on big producers. Mm -hmm. And then Africa, of course, with Lula Goncoto and Kibali, which you know, and the recently consolidated Tanzanian assets, we have 1.5 million ounces for the first two years, and then a little stable at ours at 1.3. And this is before we find anything more or expand it or replace it. So we're very comfortable with our five million ounce guidance and the costs are coming down the capital goes to sustaining capital 
we generate the cash and then we'll look for opportunities to build on that foundation. Mark, you are a fierce competitor. Anyone who knows you <laughs> knows you're a fierce competitor. You don't want to get in your way. You're an <laughs> adrenaline junkie. How important is it to you to be in the number one spot in terms of gold producer? So absolutely not important at all. We've said what we want to do is to be the most valued mining company, not only gold company, on this planet. Why do I do that? It's specific. We want shareholders to want to own us, not to invest in us, but to own us. We want young people to join us and want to be part of our, our team. And we want our host countries to want to have us in their country because we deliver value, not only for their treasury, but also their, the people of that host country. And so that, and that, you know, the point that you started with is, we, you know, I'm very clear that we want to build a business that's still going to be here right. in two decades yeah. time. So you've got to look at what is a modern mining company going to look like? And those, if you get it yeah. right, yeah you will tick those three boxes. And that's such an important point. And do you feel part of the reason that perhaps the younger generation doesn't consider mining is because they don't see it as sustainable, they don't see it as green? Do you think that's part of the problem? Yes, and also as miners, we exclude them because you know we've always naturally gone to the back of the queue for intellect. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we are, I mean, in this end, and particularly if you look at the US and if you look at it's full employed, yeah. fully employed. But where is that employment? And you know, young people aspire to be at the top of their game. And what the mining industry offers young people is the ability to, is, is, is to become civil engineers, electrical engineers, social, social engineers, you know, infrastructure, health, right. we do all that. And so it is a very special place, but we, we've never seen ourselves as that. We always, you know, we are scared of our own shadow. We worry about, you know, the criticism we attract all the time, but we're our own worst enemies. We need to go out there and promote ourselves. And the best way to, to continue to position ourselves as a modern organization is get the young people in to help us and, build it. And, and Mark, you know, you've been critical of the mining industry of the past. So if I put you in front of a room in front of like the mid tiers and the juniors, what would you want to tell those CEOs? Like, wake up and... So, I'd <laughs> want to tell them that maybe some of you shouldn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> and that you well, should, you've got too many management teams with too few assets and we need to consolidate. And you know, you, uh, Daniel, if you look back a year yeah. when we did those two quick right. transactions and you see all the transactions that have happened in the last 12 months, we've seen that happen. And you know what? This last year is the first time that gold equities have outperformed the gold for many, many years. And so we've started. Okay. We're by no means there yet, but we've started. Do you think another problem is sometimes they don't know when to let go of a deposit? or walk away from a project and they just exactly. you know, cling to it and say, no, it's going to be built and there's gold there. And you, you know, yeah, that's sometimes a, that's you just have to let it go, perhaps. Exactly. And I, I mean, you know, it's always easy to, to, to criticize, but I always say to, to anyone, if you prepare to criticize, come up with an example. So we've done the nice bit in that we consolidated Barrick. We did a much more complicated, challenging exercise in in challenging our partners in, in Newmont to put our assets together and both of us mm -hmm. now agree it was the right thing to do. And when you look at our recent deal with Taranga, mm -hmm. with our Masawa asset, there's a classic example where traditionally the mining industry would have built another mine and we went to the president and said, look, we don't have to build this mine because we've got a mine next door. So let's put these two together. It enhances your tax take because you don't get the big capital shield delay while we pay back capital. We have a much stronger organization in the, in the combination. It grows the uh, gold industry in Senegal and West Africa in general. And, and, uh, and our shareholders benefit, but so do the Taranga shareholders. I know a lot of our viewers watching want to get your take on the gold forecast. Uh, obviously, gold has had an incredible year. $1,900 gold doesn't seem so out of reach uh, right now. Uh, Goldman Sachs putting out a projection of $1,800 gold. Uh, what's your take on 
on the price. So Danielle, just to put it in perspective, we still allocate our capital at 1200 yeah. because the gold price over the years that I've been in this industry go up and down, goes up and down, not necessarily in that sequence. Um, and what we're seeing now is we've seen a gentle increase mm -hmm. in the gold price for some time. And it's and it, and it's and never before in the decades that three decades I've been involved in the gold industry are the technicals so aligned for the gold price. What we are seeing is a bit of noise from the uh, virus scare uh, that that you can't run your business on that. You know, various other investors position themselves right, right. Uh, around that risk, and that's why the gold price has sparked a, a right. little bit. Not as much as, as it should have, perhaps, but more importantly, if you look at the gold equities, they're much more, they, they, they're not as highly valued as you point out earlier, because again, we can't show that runway of 10 years or longer in, in investment, and we have to do that. But I would, say, um, I would say that the gold price is very definitely, uh, has more upside risk, and I'm talking about from the sort of average that we saw around 13 to 1400 mm -hmm. and we've seen it break 1500 we've seen it break 1600 some of that is short term but the other thing is you've seen as well china immediately move to create more liquidity Con and and this this um, global economy is too insular too focused on short termism we're not as a as a globe global economy focused on everyone on the on the planet Interesting. and we you know so when you look at this i just think that the the geopolitical risk and the economic risk of our planet as it stands today is at risk um and uh, and 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 so driven by of course this the the concern about the environment but i would urge people to look past that to society the S and the G and the ESG, <laughs> right. um, because really we as, a, as privileged members of this global community should be worrying about how do we make sure that we don't leave anyone more, anybody else behind in our sort of vision and we bring those people out of poverty. Right, but there's too much selfishness. Exactly. Right? You mentioned the coronavirus, and, and you said you can't build a gold business based on this, but it has supported the, the gold price. Um, it has uh, put the stress on the copper price down 9% year to date. Uh, has it impacted mining operations? No, uh, not yet. I'm sure it has in some parts of the world. But, you know, um, for Barrick, uh, you know, I've been through the Western African Ebola crisis, we're still dealing with the Ebola crisis in the Eastern DRC. It's, by the way, today was the eighth day we haven't seen a new infection there. And we, we understand that, uh, that epidemic risk. And uh, although Ebola is not as infectious as, uh, as the coronavirus, it's a lot more deadly. And, and, and what we've learned, and we've already rolled those uh, 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 protocols out, is common hygiene is so important to managing this understanding everybody coming in yeah. and out of your organization and you know we've we've got uh, assets everywhere in the world in the and and in the, the the developed world is the place that you have to really worry i can't believe it's already you know over a year that uh, you're at barrack now looking back a particular highlight for you of this past year mark you know, the highlights have been the people that I work with. Uh, you know, we, our, I remember sitting with uh, John Thornton and saying, if we're going to do this ambitious project and we're going to get everyone behind, the most important thing is the people. And in July uh, of 2018, we, we got 11 executives from both sides and we sat down for a day and worked through uh, getting their input on yeah. what, you know, sharing what we wanted to do and getting their you know, their concerns and their what excited them and so on. And then in November of 2018, we had a 30 person review and we, with a, with a facilitator and we worked through our vision and who, what we would all mm. do in the next 12 months. And last two weeks ago, we had that same uh, workshop and we looked back 
and it was amazing. Everyone was amazed, but it was what, how much yeah. we achieved against what we set ourselves to achieve. And again, it takes me back to young people, agility. You know, the greatest thing about younger people from my, compared to my generation is we were good learners, but you had to teach us. Uh, the young people teach themselves today, you know, the gizmos and technology well, we and that sort of thing. Yeah. And so, and so, you know, and, and really to see that success and, 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 and everything we achieved last year is really uh, a result of that teamwork Mark, across the Barrett Group. You have had tremendous success, Mark, and now you are headed to the PDAC yes. in Toronto, the world's largest mining uh, conference. I will not be there. Kiko News will be there. Right. Um, but you are a keynote speaker. So yes. what, what's, what's your message going to be? So I've got two messages, one to Africa about, uh, you know, when you look at this world and you look at the demands on metals and minerals, Africa has, and everyone boasts about Africa's endowment and it's never been able to unlock it because, you know, we think we're short term globally, mm. but Africa is even more short term and we sort of eat the lunch before it's baked. And so uh, is, there's a huge opportunity by 2025, Africa will have the biggest, the largest population under 25 years old. It's wireless and we've proved that you can build world-class businesses with Africans. So, so my, my message is, you know, politicians and, and NGOs and everyone associated with Africa, we all need to get together um, and, 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 and really partner yeah. between capital, human capital, real capital, and, and the sort of platform, government platforms to unlock what is an enormous endowment. That's the one. And the other is all about this industry and mining in general needs to invest in its future. Uh, it needs to find better quality assets. It needs to invest in its future in the sense of ESG, license to operate. And you know, we built Bar uh, Rand Gold on license to, uh, our license to operate because we operated in places you wouldn't go on holiday to. But we, were, we right. proved to be successful because you know, we really built that partnership. And, and I think, you know, again, if we're gonna be uh, relevant in the future and, and be able to sit back and, and talk about what we do and, and, and be celebrated by society, right we're going to have to do things differently and we're going to have to invest in that. Mark Burstow, CEO of Barrick Gold, continued success. Thank you so much for, Thanks, for coming Daniel. down to the thank Financial you for inviting me. District here in New York City. And thank you for watching. We will have much more coverage for you. We will be headed to the PDAC in Toronto, so be sure to follow all our coverage on kitco.com.